Hello guys, this is Dr. Palne Pramanikam again. All hospitals in the United States, including my hospital, is completely getting occupied with COVID cases. 90% of them are unvaccinated. Out of this 90%, 10% are actually dying. The most important point that people are missing here is the remaining 10% of patients who got vaccinated completely with two doses but still end up getting sick, hospitalized and sometimes dying as well. That is the group of population that I'm going to discuss in this video. Another important point to discuss is that whatever happened in America usually happens in India three months later. So right now our hospitals are full. Patients are actually waiting in the corridor even outside the emergency room because there is no beds available in the hospital. The same situation might happen two to three months from now in India and that is why it is very important to focus on this group of population. So in this video, we're going to talk about number one, why are people getting COVID even after complete vaccination? Number two, why are people getting severe COVID to a point of hospitalization or sometimes even dying even after complete vaccination? Number three, is it the time for booster dose? If so, what vaccine that you should take to be as a booster dose? And number four, when will this all end? And is India is expecting the same thing what is happening here in US right now? So there are four reasons that people can get COVID after complete vaccination. Number one, even with complete vaccination, most of the vaccines provide only 95% efficacy. Even some vaccines provide only 80% efficacy, which means that you are still at risk of getting COVID. Vaccine is not to prevent infection. Vaccine is mainly to prevent severe hospitalization and death. Vaccine is like wearing a helmet while you are driving to avoid a road traffic accident. It doesn't mean that accident will not happen if accident happens your head will be saved your life will be saved the second most important reason is if your immunity is decreased the vaccines might not work for example there are 100 virus particles and you need 100 antibodies to counteract these virus particles if your immunity is suppressed vaccine will produce only 50 antibodies and that's why you need a booster dose to raise it up to 100 to counteract the infection if you have only 50 antibodies you are at increased risk of getting COVID, and that is what is happening now the third point is high viral load exposure for example you only have 100 antibodies but you have 200 virus particles being exposed you will get COVID at that time as well if vaccination is the train that you need to get on unfortunately you might end up in an unreserved compartment where there is no six feet distance there are six people within the six feet the fourth reason is vaccine escape variants. There might be some variants of this virus which might not be covered by this vaccine. So far, the difference between vaccinated and unvaccinated was death and hospitalization. The death and hospitalization was significantly low in vaccinated group, significantly higher in unvaccinated group. But in the last few weeks, the death and hospitalization is increasing in the vaccinated group as well. Just a little bit may be the start of a new variant. Similar to the helmet concept that I mentioned before, it appears that people who are wearing helmet are having more accidents as well. Maybe the helmet is a little bit loose and it might need a little bit tightening. So how do we know that the helmet needs a little bit of tightening? Because we have data from Israel where they vaccinated everybody with Pfizer vaccination and whoever got vaccinated eight months ago starting to have infection with COVID now leading to hospitalization and sometime death as well. So the protection has gone down to 64% compared to 95% before raising the concern that maybe the antibodies produced by the mRNA vaccine Pfizer might not be sustainable after after six to eight months. And at the same time, Pfizer did a study that after six months, when the antibodies wean down, if you give a third dose, it increases the antibody levels five to 10 times more than the second dose. This Pfizer company has a solution to any problem. It looks like the Rapitex English learning course where it teaches any language in 30 days. I think they knew that it was coming and hence they have a solution to this already and they plan the study well ahead. They also changed their name after the complete FDA approval to Kamunati. I was like calling my friend Saravana Kumar, Day Kamunati, did you get Kamunati? So since Israel have started giving booster doses to their patient population, US is shrewd enough and also trying to be one step ahead of the virus and thinking about giving booster vaccines to everybody from September 20th onwards. 
So this is exactly similar to Sachin Tendulkar hitting a hundred at Chepak Chennai Stadium. Gets super confident, goes to lots, gets bowled out under swinging conditions, goes to Adelaide, gets caught behind under swinging conditions. Confidence goes down, comes back to Chennai, hits a hundred against a poor Bangladesh team, and then increases the confidence again. That is the concept of the booster dose. So should you get a booster dose now? That is a million dollar question. The data is not very clear. It is based on the experience that Israel had because of increasing number of hospitalization and deaths in vaccinated patients. But it might make sense for two reasons. Number one, it is always better to be extra cautious and be one step ahead of the virus. You could compare this with me going to an airport for an 8 p.m. flight at 7 p.m. compared to my mom who goes to the 8 p.m. flight for a 7 p.m. as well, but the day before. The second reason you should really consider about booster doses, there is increasing number of unvaccinated people and I don't think we'll be able to convince them to get vaccinated anymore. And that is a playing ground for this coronavirus to pop up more variants. So this is a, one of the other reasons to boost the antibody levels up in the body again. So right now they're talking about booster doses only for mRNA vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna. The concern is that the booster is not going to be a different vaccine. It is the exact same vaccine because the concern is not whether this vaccine will cover the variants. The concern is that because of lack of antibodies, it might not be able to fight against the variant. It is good that we are talking about booster doses for Pfizer and Moderna like mRNA based vaccines but I am very concerned that the antibody levels of the all the other vaccines like Johnson & Johnson, Covaxin, Covishield, Sputnik, Sinopharm all those are supposed to go down as well. We just don't have enough data to tell you when it is going to wean down. So let's have this discussion in two different categories. Number one, when should you get the booster dose? Number two, if you are getting the booster dose, which vaccine you should get? So all the stuff that I'm going to tell you is my personal opinion after discussing with all the infectious disease experts throughout the country. It is not an official CDC recommendation. Since you guys belong to our family, I will tell you what I will do if it was my family member based on age categories. If you are in my mom and dad's age group of 65 plus, I would recommend to get booster dose right away after eight months after your last dose of your previous vaccination. Because 65 plus is considered as immunosuppressed in my opinion because COVID affects this category of patients significantly a lot more than younger patients at least at this time. If you are like my uncle who is obese, I will definitely get a booster dose. Remember for Indian people, obesity is not how you look. Obesity is based on the waist circumference. 90 centimeters for men, 80 centimeters for women. We talked about this in detail before. If you are like my aunt who has multiple medical problems like diabetes, hypertension or any other medical problems, I will get the booster right away as well because we know that COVID affects patients with multiple medical problems a lot more than a healthy patient. So for all my family members in this different age categories with different problems, I will start looking out for booster doses after eight months of the last dose of the previous vaccination. If you're healthy and you don't have any other medical problems and you are able to follow the preventative measures of COVID-19, you technically don't have to get the booster dose right away. You can wait and then see how things pan out and you can get the booster dose in a couple of months so that you can extend the immunity from the booster dose by a couple of months more than the other population. My friend Saravna Kumar is like, I got the booster dose already. I was like, how da? I went to the CVS pharmacy. They asked me, do you want to compromise? I said yes and they gave a booster shot. They, they asked you whether your immunity is compromised. Huh? I think he's getting the vaccine because of the $5 coupon that they give at the CVS pharmacy after the vaccination. Huh? He goes every day to get the coupon and get the vaccine. They said, no, 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 booster dose only one time. So the next million dollar question is which booster vaccine you should get. So right now the recommendation that they are working on is only for mRNA vaccines, Pfizer or Moderna. So if you have gotten two doses of Pfizer before, go with Pfizer or Moderna, anything is okay. If you got two doses of Moderna before, Pfizer or Moderna will work as well. I have told you before that getting a vaccine is like getting engaged to a girl. In this case, if the girl is available, please get married to the same girl. If the girl is not available, at least marry somebody else because marriage is more important. Antibodies, 
So what about Johnson & Johnson vaccine? If you have received Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we don't have any official recommendation of a booster dose yet, but we do have some data of supplementing it with an mRNA vaccine. So if you belong to any of those categories that we discussed before, which requires a booster dose, please talk to your doctor to see whether you can get a mRNA booster dose with a Pfizer or a Moderna vaccination for your previous first dose of Johnson & Johnson. But if you're healthy and if you don't have any risk factors, you could also argue that I have to wait until data comes over because this is all expert opinion I think that is a reasonable argument as well so if you're in India and you have received two doses of Covaxin and Covishield we know that it definitely lasts more than six months we just don't know how long it is going to last so they cannot officially recommend you a booster dose but in case if you belong to that patient category which rec who requires a booster dose and if you have an option of getting an mRNA vaccine I would highly recommend to get it because there is enough data to to support that antibody response is robust if you have received previously virus-based vector vaccines. For example, people who have received two doses of Covaxin in India, since this is not WHO approved, we have been giving mRNA vaccines to those students who come from India to study over here and we have seen a robust response of antibodies in that population. So it is completely okay to boost a, a viral based vector vaccine with an mRNA vaccine. The same concept can be applied to other virus based vector vaccines like Sinopharm, Sputnik vaccines as well, where a booster can be with an mRNA vaccine like Pfizer or or Moderna. The real problem and the bigger problem is we just don't know what to do if you don't have an access to get an mRNA vaccine as a booster. For example, you got two doses of Covishield and you don't have an access to Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. We just don't know what the immunity is going to look like. It might last forever that we might not have any problem at all or it might wean down in 6 to 12 months that we might see an increase in the infection rates again. This is my major concern because it is such a gray area and at the same time India has opened up everything almost back to normal including schools and shopping malls we just don't know how the immunity is going to last I'm hoping that it will completely cover the variants and we don't have to see a spike in the cases but it is absolutely important to be a little bit more careful in this critical period until we know more about the immunity protection of Covaxin and Covishield as I said before whatever has happened in US has been happening in India three months from now this is what exactly happened in January where we were completely occupied with COVID and India was free and three months later there was increase in spike of Delta variant in India so if you have listened so far and if you're still alive I can read your mind voice that it is better to get COVID rather than dealing with all this booster and listening to me let me just summarize the salient points over here number one if you belong to that category that we discussed before who requires a booster dose please see how you can boost yourself with an mRNA vaccine if the availability is not there you please be extra cautious and be more protective of yourself for the next two three months until we know more about the long-lasting immunity with this viral based vector vaccines if you're healthy and if you don't have any other medical problems, I think it is reasonable to wait and then look for more data and then you can decide which booster vaccine you should take and when to take it. So that when the vaccines were available, we were hoping that we can vaccinate 70% of the entire world and we'll come out of the pandemic right away. Unfortunately, that is not happening because many people are not believing in vaccines at all and our hospitals are completely full in the United States. So this pandemic is not going to get over. It is going to extend until June of 2022. This is the bitter truth. I think it is better to come to terms with it and do some measures to protect ourselves more by all these booster doses rather than contemplating on convincing an unvaccinated patient to get vaccinated. I'm praying to God that people who are refusing vaccination should get COVID but should not have any severe disease. They should just have mild disease and recover completely so they have natural antibodies in their body. So COVID will not have any playground to produce any more variants. The biggest concern I have is that it is just a matter of days or weeks that we are going to deal with the vaccine escape variant which will be more lethal. I know this is a long video and there was no interval so that you can buy popcorn or murukku. I was confused as well. I know you have lots of questions. We will follow this up with an another session so that we can answer your questions as much as possible. Stay safe, get vaccinated and don't eat anything after 7pm. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.